Hey everyone, this is Mitchell from Intro to Information Security. And for my assignment today, I will be giving you guys a tutorial on how to use the software SafeIP. SafeIP is a free program that is pretty simple and easy to use. Uh, while SafeIP actually has a good handful of features that I'll be going over in this video, its main functionality that drew me to it is its ability to proxy your IP address. Uh, what this means is that it is able to spoof your IP address to make it appear as though the IP address it gives you is your real one. This is a powerful tool for both uh, an individual and for an organization as it can be used to deceive adversaries attempting IP-based attacks. Uh, when they see your IP address, they may try to attack it, but in reality nothing will happen because your true IP address is masked away. All right, so uh, to install it today, I will be doing a clean install. So we'll go to Google, we'll type in safe IP. Here we go, freesafepp.com is the website. And we see the website here. We'll click on the link, get safe IP. <clears throat> All right, we'll open it up. All right, so after a quick jump to restart my computer and finish installing the software, you can see we have it open here. Uh, at the top, uh, it'll display your current IP address. Um, I'll probably have this blocked, so, you know, just for security purposes. Uh, and it'll also display your IP address down here that'll probably be blocked out also. Now, this uh, dashboard here is uh, where the meat and potatoes of the whole software is. Uh, but for the structure of this video, I'm actually going to skip over this and move on to some of the uh, more miscellaneous features, just so I can end with uh, how this thing actually works. So you can see here we have some different tabs. We have settings, optimization, and language tabs. So let's head over to the settings tab here. Now you can see we have several different checkboxes um, for different settings that we can uh, turn on and off. Now something that makes this really uh, easy to use, as I said before, is that uh, you can see these are all pretty self-explanatory options, malware protection, advertisement blocking, etc. cetera. Uh, however, <laughs> you see this one says show balloon tips. Uh, and it kind of gives a balloon tip there. Uh, whenever you scroll over one of these, it'll actually give you um, a more detailed description of what each one is actually doing. Uh, you can see here, like for advertisement blocking, it uh, blocks advertisements from appearing in web pages. So it's actually like a web or uh, an ad blocker too. Uh, so let me just go through these really quick to explain what they all do. So we have malware protection, uh, blocks a list of harmful websites from being accessed. Uh, now I, I look through the uh, files of the software and even on the website and it never mentions what sites are being blocked so uh, just keep that in mind don't turn this on and then go somewhere that you know is unsafe thinking it'll save you because you might just be running your computer into the ground that would be very fun uh, advertisement blocking already went over that one acts as an ad blocker cookie tracking protection it's gonna stop cookies from being uh, sent <laughs> tracking you uh, referring URL protection, same thing as cookies, uh, you're not going to get any URL referrals, and same with browser ID protection. Now, uh, I did mention earlier this is a free software, and if you look at this next option, the Wi-Fi protection one, you'll notice that it says Pro next to it. There is a, like a Pro subscription, uh, but really, I, I, I was looking through this and I don't think that you would need the Pro for anything really important. Uh, Wi-Fi protection just says, It'll randomly change your MAC address. It's a useful feature. Um, I just don't think I don't think it's worth paying the cost. So let's just move on to the second column here. Uh, this is a, just a simple one: run on Windows startup. <clears throat> uh, this feature will actually skip until I can get back to the uh, main uh, function of the software. And then we also have DNS privacy. It'll hide DNS requests from your ISP and traffic encryption and, uh, encrypts all the traffic between safe IP and your computer. So that's it for settings. Let's move over to op optimizations here. Now, uh, I actually thought there was an error with the software because I was looking at this and all these little uh, radio bubbles were checked. It actually took me a while to realize that the top one is green, that's the default one, and then the rest of these are all grayed out and you can select them. Basically what we're seeing is uh, the different settings that when you change your IP address, uh, the software will kind of automatically put in place to make it so that these functions that they list are 
uh, a little more streamlined. So here we have anonymous web browsing. It's the default function of the software, so it's a default optimization. Um, here we have fast content streaming. This is like if you wanted to browse YouTube anonymously. Uh, master bulk mailing. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, spam people's inboxes for whatever reason and your ISP wouldn't allow that. Downloading and downloading torrents and torrenting. Uh, this is optimized for, as it says, large downloads and faster torrent usage. And then we have speed boost mode. Uh, there's no tip for this, but all I can imagine is that it would work even... If you had this checked with a pro subscription, it would be even faster. You know, if you're paying for it, they would really want you to get the most out of your service. As far as I could see, uh, all of these... When, it's, when it says optimize, what it's actually doing is, let's say you pick uh, an IP address that is far away from you, uh, and then you were to hit fast content streaming. Well, it would take a while for, let's say, if you were overseas with a fake IP address to have, like if you were on YouTube, to have that YouTube video stream to you. So let's say you were to click on fast content streaming, this would optimize the software and change the IP address you picked to be one that's much closer to you. Uh, that way, your connection is faster. All right, so let's now navigate on back to the dashboard, and let's discuss the uh, real meat and potatoes of this, proxying our IP address. So again, we see that our current IP address is up here, and we have our real IP again. The, this, the current IP will change whenever you select a different IP address, but your real IP will always remain the same because it's what your IP address actually is. And below that, we see we have all of our little checkmark settings down here. I have them all turned off, so they're turned off here. And also up here by current IP, we have our connect and change IP buttons, which we'll be discussing in just a second. Here, we have a drop-down list of all the available fake IP addresses that you can proxy to. And you can see there, we have some in Oregon, Indiana, California. Scroll down. We have some in the United Kingdom, and it just lists all other countries. We see Australia, Austria, Brazil. So there are a fair amount of these. Um, <laughs> for the purpose of this, let's pick one that's in the United States, and I guess I'll just pick the top one. So we'll go with Portland. So we have it selected here on the drop-down, and then we'll go up to Connect, and hit Connect. <laughs> and now I'll take the uh, little sensor bar off, and we can see that my uh, IP address is now the IP address of this Portland, Oregon proxy address. Uh, and also, if you notice down in the bottom right corner, my uh, computer alerted me that my IP address has changed now. So basically, that's how that works. You can see now that uh, IP protection is now on via proxy. And so while we're connected to this Oregon IP location, uh, we can hit change IP, and it will slightly vary up uh, which IP address we're connected to at that location. You can see we're changing from 16 to 18 at the end there. Very subtle, but it's good to know that there are uh, multiple IT IP addresses for each location. Additionally, you can see this little uh, refresh button thing. This is another like pro feature. Um, when you subscribe to the pro thing, I read that um, they have all the locations available for the pro users. Whereas if you were a free user, obviously, uh, some of the locations won't be available. And if you hit refresh... Sometimes the locations that are available will switch up. You can see now South Carolina is at the top. Portland shuffle down here. All right, so now that we've talked about all that, uh, let's head on back over to settings. As you might remember, there was a setting that we skipped over last time. Uh, right here, rotate IP automatically. So what you'll do is you'll check this box, and it says number of minutes. And uh, what you can do here is set the number of minutes, and after that set amount of time, your IP address will change automatically. This is really cool to me because uh, we talked in class about dynamically addressing uh, machines on your network. So if you're using a machine on your network with a spooked IP address, uh, let's say maybe one of these IP addresses becomes unavailable, or let's say your attacker is like trying to sniff you out and he's like, oh, this guy's not really in Oregon. Uh, what this will do is it'll keep changing your IP address to really throw him off the scent. So let's say he tries to figure out what IP address you're actually at, and now it changes again, and he goes, oh, oh, maybe that's the real IP address. He tries to go for it, nothing happens. Again, this is a, a really good way to deceive an attacker. All right, so to conclude this video, now that I've explained all the different features of the software, I'd just like re to reiterate why this is such a powerful tool. So as I mentioned, um, this software's pretty useful for both an individual and an organization. 
uh, because it can be used to deceive your adversaries if they attempt an IP-based attack. They might be able to see your IP address, but because it's a proxy IP address, if they were to attack it, uh, nothing would actually come of it because it's not your real IP address. They can't actually get access to your machine or any of your resources if they were to attack it. Obviously, that's pretty useful because if they can't attack your machine, well, then they can't attack your network, they can't down your organization, and they're pretty much thwarted at that point. Alright, so that's the end of this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.